obviously really proud of our guys uh, to beat a really good team like Rutgers. Um, you know, we kind of talked all week. Uh, just another league game. Um, these games are always tough and they're always tight. And uh, Rutgers, you know, every year we play them, it seems like it's a one-goal game, and they're so senior-oriented. And um, obviously, Jules Henningberg is probably, you know, he's, he's about as good as any guy we've seen this year. So. Um, proud of our guys, uh, certainly a lot that we can learn, uh, but I just loved our guys' fight and, and their grit today. They just they battled and they battled, and, and to have come back late uh, shows a lot about their mental toughness, and, and certainly it kind of stems from the two guys behind me, one at one end, one at the other. But um, again, I, a couple guys that I think did a terrific, terrific job, Wes Janik off the wing, getting some, some tough grounders, and, and then Austin Henningsen. Uh, kind of coming in the second half, I think, gave us a big lift and got some possessions so we could get into a little bit of a flow. And uh, Ty Barberich, you know, he's got his hands full sometimes down there with those face-off guys, but he made some, some key choices, and I think that really helped us in the, in the fourth quarter. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland, for structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Questions? Hey, Connor, uh, the turnovers today is extremely uncharacteristic of a Maryland team. Mm -hmm. Can we blame part of that on the weather or just good defense from Rutgers or just sloppy play? Uh, credit to Rutgers. Honestly, they have a great team, uh, great uh, shorties, great D. Their goal is uh, tremendous. So, you know, it was a sloppy game. That's on us, you know, we got to get back to work and focus on our stick work and communicating, but credit to Rutgers, they're a great defense. Connor, you guys are trailing 9-2. Did you get a sense that you had started to lead the charge to you know, tie it up and then take the lead? Yeah, I think we, I'm playing with a great group. Uh, every time we go into timeout or uh, go into talk with Coach Rapper, everybody's very calm and looking to see what's the best play. Well, obviously, Coach Rapper's asking us, what do you think, what do we see? And I think we just talk it up as an offense. and. That starts with a great week of prep that we have. Uh, the scout team giving us great looks all week, showing us what Rutgers is going to give us, and I think we just try to ex execute the game plan. Did you NPS Nonprofit Services has the technology and know-how to achieve your nonprofit goals. We have all the tools that you need for your nonprofit to be successful, including tech support, consulting, development strategies, and business continuity to make sure your data is safe on-prem or in the cloud anywhere all the time. Call NPS at 877-797-8776. We're easy to reach and easy to work with. Uh, I don't think so. You know, I uh, put it as, as many uh, like I trust in Jared and Logan and all those guys. They help me out so much. I help them, so it's a it's a give take with all of us, and uh, I trust them with anything with the ball on their stick at any time. Coach, what exactly were they doing to get so many easy looks at Danny? I mean, for a Maryland team. Yeah, we just didn't do a great job with the inside. They they double cut you. Um, they were inverting, you know, going big little and double cutting the inside and. We just at times didn't crash down and rotate and help the inside, and that was a really big theme at halftime was we just have to get down and get in um, and do a better job there and then obviously try to get the guy's hands. Um, and, and candidly, you know, especially in the second quarter, like we just we had one shot. We never had the ball. We had so many self-inflicted wounds, um, seven penalties, like in, in six in one quarter. I don't know if I've ever been at a lacrosse game where someone had six penalties in a quarter. And we had six. Like you, you can't expect to win many games doing that. And, and that was kind of the message at halftime. Was listen, if you told us before the game we had seven penalties at halftime and we'd be tied, I would actually be pretty happy with that. Um, so it was a chance for us just to reset. Um, it really wasn't like you know overhauling anything. It was just getting back and, and kind of taking a deep breath, being fundamentally solid. You know, the face-off violations were tough early, and then we started getting over aggressive, and we started fouling and took some silly, silly penalties, but our defense was wearing down, so getting that 10-minute break I thought was huge, and then the offense kind of complimenting them at times and possessing the ball, and we got some late goals on, on some shot clocks, which were key for us because not only do you get the goal, you know, your, your defense is catching, breath, catching their breath. Dan, the, you were, they had six extra man opportunities. You stopped them six times in a row. Can you talk about the defense and how you guys stoned them like that? 
Um, you know, I think it's a lot of credit to Coach Bernhardt. Um, he always has a great plan for us um, on you know every aspect of our defense. And you know, our guys did a really good job of getting their sticks in the lanes, getting nuggets, and just causing turnovers. And um, you know, a lot of credit goes to the scout team. They kind of kicked our butt all week um, on you know man up, man down, and, uh, and also on the sixes. I think they gave us a great look to, for what to prepare for. And uh, I think our guys just did a good job executing the game plan for uh, for man down and getting some good turnovers. Dan, what did you see in that last possession when I think 21 had the ball right on the crease? Do you remember? Um, I was just trying to get hit with the ball, honestly. I mean, uh, shots like that, when they get in tight, I just, you know, I'm hoping that I can either get a piece of the shot or, or my, my D can help me out getting a, getting a stick on his hands. But, um, you know, we got the ball back and then uh, got the ball to our offense and they, they killed the rest of the clock for us. Dan, where do you put that? The end of the first half with all those penalties, as well as some of the failed clears in the second half. What do you put that down to? Is that a lack of composure by this team, or maybe the weather? Um, you know, we, we we practice in rain before we played in all different types of weather, so it's, it's we can't put put it on the weather. I think you know, just today was a was a tough day for us with our stick work. We need to go back on our next practice and you know really dial it back in. But um, the penalties, you know, we try we talk about it playing with emotion, but not playing emotional. And um, you know, coach addressed it at halftime. We were playing a little bit emotional in the first half, but um, I thought halftime was a good reset button so that we could um, get it all back together and kind of uh, compose ourselves and get ready for the second half. Coach, after four tough road wins and coming back home and being a top ten opponent, how big is that for the momentum going forward for the rest of the year? Uh, I think it's, it, it certainly was great to be back home. Uh, we kind of joked about it during the week. We were like kind of pointing to that the Maryland Stadium and go, hey, do you guys remember that place? Um, <laughs> we had some fun with it, but it's always special to be in here, um, you know, just to get back home and to have a game where you can kind of wake up in your own bed and, and go through your routine and go into our, you know, our breakfast place. So it just felt great to be back. Obviously, the weather and the time change of the game was tough, um, but I thought our administration and Rutgers administration did a great job. Um, and with the Big Ten, it's supposed to be really bad tonight with lightning and thunder. And I think the concern was a safety, but b you start that game at seven, and every time there's a potential delay with lightning, I mean you could be staring down, you know, midnight. And then what do you do? Do you finish? Do you have Ruck, does Rutgers have to stay over? What do you do? Um, so I thought they they made a great decision there, um, you know, and I thought they took their time to make the decision. Um, but, you know, getting back here is special for us. You know, we're staring down uh, senior day next week, which will be a very emotional day, a uh, very emotional week. Uh, these guys mean so much to us. Um, it'll be hard, um, you know, pregame for sure, uh, but we, we've got to be able to handle that. But um, senior day is always special, and these guys have done, you know, more than I can say in, in just this meeting. But I think in terms of going back to the fail clears, I didn't do a very good job getting our guys ready in the clearing game today, and, and I kicked myself for that. We just we just didn't do as much of that and worked on some things this week. So I got to help our guys and just do a better job there, and I think we can get better. John, how comforting is it to have a guy like Connor? Uh, well, I, you know, when you have a guy, and, and guys like Connor don't come around very often, um, and again, he's as talented a, a guy as he is. You know, he's also like that good a guy and just that good a person. Um, you know, we had a guy come by practice yesterday, Josh Rubenstein, and um, he's a guy that um, has linked up with us through the Casey Powell World Lacrosse Foundation. And, um, you know, Josh been going through some cancer and, and just a tough time. And, um, you know, he came and visited with us. He had breakfast with us today. He came today to the game. and. You know, Connor's type of guy, he goes home to Connecticut, and he's not too far from Connor, and while other guys are hanging out on, on, on the holiday break, Connor's going to visit a guy at Yale Hospital. I mean, that's Connor Kelly. Uh, so, you know, it's one thing that, you know, he scores eight points, but you're proud of him because it's not, he's not defined by just being a, a good lacrosse player. Um, he cares about people. Um, he wants to make a bigger impact than that. But um, he's so poised, he can beat you with and without the ball. Um, he makes guys around him better. And even today, he gets caught on defense, which we practice every week, and you have total confidence he can do a great job there. So if there's a better player out there this year, I haven't seen him. Um, certainly not trying to promote our guys. It's not really what we do. But I haven't seen anybody that has a bigger impact on any team. Um, and we've seen some good ones. Connor, how happy were you today with Public Fairman? It seemed like he was looking for it. It seemed like he was going for the shot. And you set him up a few times perfectly. He hit a couple real big goals today. Yeah, he's an awesome player. Uh, I know I've been working with him. We shoot together, you know, throughout the weeks, and he's just done an awesome job. He continues to get better. 
And you know, as a freshman, you're going to go through highs, you're going to go through lows, but you know, you got to stay, you know, calm. And I thought he did great today. Hey, John, down one with six minutes left, you went with that second midfield group, and they got you a goal. What was sort of? Yeah, uh, you know, it's funny. Part of it was, you know, we we, we looked at that that Rotan's group, and they were exhausted. Bubba had got, gotten caught on defense and, and was huffing and puffing still. Um, so it, it made sense to go to to those guys and. Uh, that's where, you know, I kind of, you know, every week when we play somebody, we go back and we look at uh, last year's film because usually you can pick up on certain things and teams don't change too much. And you look at maybe what you did well, what you didn't do well. Um, and looking back at last year to this year, um, I thought our, right now at this point, we have two midfield groups that I think are much more balanced and I think um, bring us more than a year ago. Um, and I think part of it's because we have you know, pretty experienced guys relative to last year. Um, you know, Adam's back again, but then you have Colin Giblin, who's a senior, and, and DeMeo's been with us. He's not a true freshman. You know, he was on the scout team last year and redshirted, but he played against Tim Muller, like, all year long, and, and Timmy would basically kick the heck out of him every day in practice, and, and he earned so much respect just, you know, kind of going back at Tim. and. Uh, I thought that was a big play for him. You know, we got late and Connor gave it up and, and he steps in and, and I think he's the type of guy that when he scores Anthony Mayo, like like we get even that much more excited because everybody sees how, how hard he works. So um, again, we can go either group and I think everybody's fully confident that something good can happen out there. Time for one more guess. Connor, in the last five minutes when you guys scored those three goals, did you see anything change offensively or was it more that you guys just converted on your opportunities when you had them? I thought we were just converting on our opportunities. Obviously, I'm playing with a great group. You know, we uh, we focused in on halftime, just trying to move the ball and you know share the ball and get the ball moving. I thought it would, we played a little slow in the first half, and I thought we did a great job coming into the fourth quarter after uh, last week playing Penn State. I thought that prepared us uh, greatly for this uh, game, so it was huge for us. All right, thanks, guys.